This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. That's what it takes to win in life. If I'm going to win in life, if I'm going to win in life, it is by the Word. It is by the word. And because God's word is full of supernatural energy, he's expecting us to function from his word. So today is day one of the Rema experience. So today we'll be talking about the power of the Rema word. The power of the Rema word. When God gives you a word, it quickens you to move in the direction of his will. Because it's a rema word, it contains the energy of God. Because it's a rema word, it contains the energy of God. I'd like us to look at Genesis chapter 12. In Genesis chapter 12 from the KJV translation, it said, now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country. A rhema word is a limitation breaker. Sometimes you may be dealing with experience in the natural, and it looks like I don't know what to do about this situation. But a word from God can break the limitation if we respond to that word of God. Abraham was in a state where things were not moving according to God's intention, according to God's expectation for his life. And now the word of the Lord came on, and the word of the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. One of the primary reasons for a Rema word is to change your perspective, is to give you a perspective that is consistent to God's intention. That, that's one of the primary one of the primary reasons of a Rema word is that it gives you a perspective that is consistent to God's intention. A, a Rema word puts you in a position where you see things from God the name. Dimension. From God's own dimension, you start seeing things from God's own dimension. That's one of the primary reasons of Abraham's word. So here the word of the Lord came to me, said, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show you. This is how you begin the journey of greatness. It begins with a word from God. It doesn't matter the reports you've had in the natural. Choose to exalt the word of God above the report. What most people do sometimes is to exalt what they are going through, their situation, and what they're dealing with in the natural, but they don't really give the word of God the first place. Giving God, God's word the first place is a proof that you can break out of the limitation and you can produce supernatural victory. You can produce supernatural success by standing on the word of God. So here we saw that the word of the Lord came to Abraham and said, get thee out of thy country. Now, there is a way of thinking that glorifies the Father. And there is a way of thinking that takes us off the will of God. A lot of people, their way of thinking does not welcome the manifestation of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Their way of thinking uh, resists the manifestation of the move of God in their life. And one of the key things a Roman word would do is to give you a way of thinking that lined up with God's word, a way of thinking that is consistent with the word of God. This is one of the primary reasons why God speaks to people to give them a way of thinking, to, to paint a picture in their mind. Can you see a better picture? Can you see possibility where others are seeing limitation? Can you see doors opening when people say the doors can open? Can you see opportunity when people say there is no opportunity? A remember what puts you in the position of supernatural thinking. It puts you in a position where you think supernaturally, where you don't consider the limitation because your thinking is not coming from your feeling. Your thinking is not coming from opinion. Your thinking is coming from God's word. Your way of thinking is coming from the word of God. And this is what the Spirit of God wants us to understand today, that a word from God will put you in a direction of strength. A word from God. And this is what changed the story of this man called Abraham. It changes whole life when that word came from God. Look at that scripture, Genesis 12, verse 1. It said, now the Lord has said unto Abraham, the most important thing is what God has said. 
What I'm going to say and what you're going to be saying will come from what you have heard. If what you have heard is not consistent with the word of God, there is no need for declaration. So if you hear the word of the Lord came to him and said, get out of thy country, get out of thy country. To you, it may not be to get out of your country or out of your street. It may be to get out of a way of thinking that is keeping you away from walking in possibility. It may be getting out of this mindset that it is not possible. With my job, I can't be able to handle this project. Never allow the voice of your job to take the place of the revelation of El Shaddai. Never allow the voice of your job to take the place of the revelation of El Shaddai. This is why it's very strategic that we have the revelation knowledge of El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. That revelation is strategic if we're going to walk in supernatural possibility. That revelation that the, the El Shaddai is my source, God is my source, God is my helper. Like the psalmist who said, look unto the hills from whence come at my help, for my help comes from the Lord. Can I say this to you? When God said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country, he was taking off limitation what he could consider as a limitation. He was not seeing possibility. He was not seeing life beyond where he was. So when the Rema word came, it painted a picture of a future that God wants him to come into. One of the primary reasons of a Rema word is to give the God kind of idea, is to drop the God kind of idea in your mind that you begin to see that picture. Maybe the word of the Lord came to you right now and said, by this time next year, you'll be that free. And you're owing over close to 2 million USD. And you're hearing by this time next year, you'll be debt free. And in the natural, all your paycheck in a month, uh, or your paycheck in a month is just $2,000 or $5,000. And then you do the mathematics for two years, $5,000 for two years, calculate every two weeks. It's not up to that 1 million USD. But you see, our faith is not based on what we can do. Our faith is based on what God's word has said. Our action will originate from what the word of God has said. Our action should originate from what God's word has said, not just what we feel. Because what I feel may not be consistent with his thoughts, but his word has the final authority. And this is what God wants you to understand, that what you're dealing with is subject to his word. And this is why it's your responsibility to look at for God's word. What is God saying about this? That's the most important thing. Not what the doctor said. Not what the financial expert said. Not what the bank said. What is God saying? of your thinking and if you're going to move your life in the direction of the will of God you have to think from the direction of God's word if you're going to move your life in the direction of the will of God you have to think from the knowledge of the word of God because you can't move your life in the direction of his will when you're ignorant of his word you can move your life and this is what the scripture was saying in genesis chapter 12 said now the lord has said unto abram the lord has said unto abram get thee out of thy country and um, from thy kindred you know these are very important things that has to do with his life his country his kindred his father's house these these are things that we are connected to his life most times when god wants to move you forward he will give you a word that will take you out of your comfort zone most times when God wants to move you forward, he will give you a word that will take you out of your comfort zone. Your comfort zone may be right now, maybe your paycheck is a thousand dollars and you're used to giving a hundred dollar tithe. That's your, what you can do based on the scripture percentage principle, the titan principle. And then the word of the Lord came to you. I want you to go into 30% of your income. I have a friend of mine who is a pastor. This guy used to pastor several years ago, and later I stopped pastoring. I went into internet ministry, teaching the word of God from school to school, from place to place. And one day he was sharing with me, he said, I put my financial life change from the day God told me that every money I receive, I should give 30% of that money. He said, that was how his financial life changed. 
He started traveling to places, doing meetings. God started blessing the work of his hand. He said, that instruction changed his life. That was a rema word. When you receive a word from God, you have received supernatural resources for creating the desired future. When you receive a word from God, this is why it's important to hear from God. It doesn't matter what people are saying. The most important thing is to check inside. What is the Spirit of God saying concerning this? What is the Spirit of God saying concerning my gifts, my talent, my relationship, my platform? What is the Spirit of God saying? It is important for me to acknowledge what God is saying, not allowing what we are feeling to distract how we see things. It's important. For we to acknowledge what God is saying. And that was why he said here, he said, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee. There is a land God wants to show him. Now from the message translation, look at how he said it. God told Abraham, leave your country. From the message translation, he said, God told Abraham, leave your country, your family and your father's home for a land that I will show you. There is a land God wants to show him. This was a word from God. Now, the potential and the capacity of this word can only be, ex can only be experienced when Abraham do will do the application of the word. This word he has received from God has the capacity, has the potential to transform his life but the transformation is rooted in the application of the word. The transformation, if Abraham is going to say transformation as a result of what God has said, he has to be a doer of that word. He has to be a doer. He cannot just say, well, God has spoken. I've just put my hands. When God gives you a word, it's a call to action. When God gives you a word, it's a call to application. When God gives you a word, it's a call to action. God cannot give you a word and then you're just thinking, okay, I wish this thing will come to pass. I wish one day it's going to happen. You know, some people receive a prophetic word of what the Lord is going to do in their lives. And they say things like, I wish this is just going to happen. When God gives you a word, he has called into partnership with that word. He's expecting you to accept responsibility for application of what you have heard. That's what he's trying to call it into. And that was what happened here. He gave him the word. And then in verse 2, he started giving him promise. The promise. He gave me a word. I'm going to show you a land. There is a land ahead of you. This man doesn't know the land. This man doesn't know where the land is. He's going to depend on the leadership of the word of God to get to his destination. He's going to depend depend on the leadership of the word of God to get to his destination. You can't get to your destination if you don't acknowledge the leadership of the word and the spirit. You can't get to your destination if you don't acknowledge the leadership of the word and the spirit. And this is very strategic for every one of us in the body of Christ that we have to be led by the word of God and the spirit of God. What is God's word saying? Just that I felt this way doesn't mean I should act that way. Just that my feeling is telling me something different. I have to consider the word of God. I have to exalt God's word above my feeling because a lot of people have made decisions as a result of how they felt, uh, as a result of their feeling, and that decision ruined a major part of their life. And this is why it's important for we to begin to teach people that how you feel shouldn't determine what you do. What you do should proceed from the knowledge of the word of God. How you feel shouldn't determine what you do. That you feel like doing this. You have to evaluate your feeling with God's word. You have to judge your feeling in the context of the word of God. This is what makes it effective. You have to judge your feeling that I felt this way. It doesn't mean I should go that way. We shouldn't allow the voice of our feeling to override principles. We should not allow the voice of our feelings to override principles. Why? Because if you allow the voice of your feeling to override principle, you're creating an atmosphere of frustration, deception, and limitation. And here the word of the Lord came to look at verse 2. He said, and I will make of thee a great nation. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. This is so powerful. God is giving this Abraham word. I will make you a great nation. 
I will bless thee. I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. The reason for that rhema word was to position him to become a distribution center for God. The reason for that rhema word that Abraham got was God, God is positioning him to become a distribution center for him. It is center where the goodness of God can find its expression. The Abraham becomes a man where God can express his goodness from. And it's so important that we, we, we get this revelation that the reason for the Rema word is that, is, is that for you to be positioned to do the will of God. This is the, 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 the ultimate reason why God gives us Rema word is for we to do his will is for the knowledge of his will to dominate our way of thinking, is for the knowledge of his will to govern our thought pattern, is for the knowledge of his will to become the foundation of our thinking. This is what he's asking us to do. And if, if you receive that word from God, you expect it to line up your thoughts with that word. Thank you, Holy Spirit said, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. He was hearing God from his spirit. He was hearing God from his spirit. That was why I said yesterday, one of the keys to step into supernatural uh, direction is renewing your mind with God's word. And how important is that, that man, you just have to wake up and read your Bible. It, reading the Bible doesn't come natural to us. We have to make the decision to read the Bible. You know, some people say things like, man, I don't feel like reading my Bible for the past two months. I've been struggling with reading my Bible for the past one month. I've been struggling with praying. Oh, they, they, most people think that to read the Bible come natural to people. The thing to pray come natural to people. No, you make decision to pray. You make decision to pray. You, you don't have to feel it. Someone said you need to feel the spirit of prayer before you pray. No, when, when, when will you feel it? It's not a feeling. It is a decision to fellowship. It is a decision for devotion. You, you have to make that decision. Yet you wake up in the morning, you wake up, you carry that Bible. You just drop it on your laps, or on your bed, or on your table, and you just open it. It's a decision. If you think it to come natural to you, you can stay for the next three months and you have not read the Bible. If you think prayer can come natural to you, you can stay for the next six months you have not prayed. When it comes to the things of the spirits, there is a decision to be made. Why? Because the God of this world, flesh will let you enjoy the work of the spirit. That was why the scripture said, walk in the spirit, that you not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. It's a decision to walk in the spirit. We wake up every day intentionally to walk in the spirit. You wake up every day intentionally to walk in the spirit. You wake up every day intentionally to walk in the spirit. You wake up every day. Yesterday may have not been a fine day, but today is going to be a fine day for me. You take that word of God into your heart. You begin to, John 15 verse 3 said, Ye are cleansed by the word I have spoken to you. You are cleansed. Your way of thinking begins to line up with God's way of doing things. Your thoughts. You know, there are certain things that the Spirit of God wants you to do in this season, but it will take an understanding of the word for you to function in that area. It will take understanding of God's word for you to function in that area. You can't truly function in that area when you don't have the revelation knowledge of His will. So here we saw in verse 3, uh, in verse 3 said this very powerful. Verse 3 said this, he said, And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that cursed thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Genesis chapter 12, verse 4, so Abraham departed. So Abraham departed. This is a very powerful word. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. He, he was not reasoning the word of God. He was not trying to say, is this a God? Is this going to work out? You see, you have to renew your mind as you can be quick to respond to God's thoughts. You have to renew your mind as you can be quick to respond to God's thoughts. You have to renew your mind as you can be quick in your response. It's not just responding, it's responding at the right time. That is the most important thing. The most important thing is that you respond according to instruction. You respond as when due, as when expected. So here, so, so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. 
He departed as the Lord. Has. This man took that word as his future. Oh, he took that word as his future. He knew his future was in this world. He never said, am I sure it's the voice of God? Am I sure it's the will of God? How can God tell me to leave my father's house? I've been used to this place for five years. Oh, if God has spoken to me, let there be a prophet to come and confirm it. You know, most of us are looking for confirmation because of our inability to understand revelation. We're looking for confirmation. Oh, I need a confirmation. I need a confirmation. I need a confirmation. I strongly believe that sometimes confirmation is for people who are still walking by sight. Confirmation is for people who are still walking by sight. They're, they're looking for confirmation. Just feed your flesh. That is what it does. It's not that you didn't hear from God the first time. It's just that you want to validate it. You want to check it out. Does this really the will of God for me? Abraham was not waiting for confirmation. This man believed he had the voice of God. He, he believed it was the voice of God. He went into action. You see, faith is an action that is consistent with God's thoughts. I said, faith is an action that is consistent with God's thoughts. I want to say that again. I said, faith is an action that is consistent with God's thoughts. It's an action. So his action here was a reflection of a man who has believed. He didn't argue with God. He didn't doubt the word of God. He didn't say, well, let's think if this is going to come to pass. Let's, okay, let me wait and have a dream. Lord, give me a dream. Lord, show me a vision. You know, we, we want to be led by external factors. Sometimes a lot of people are trying to be led by external factors. But the most important key when it comes to the leadership of the Spirit is that still small voice, that voice of God that drops in your heart, that knowing, that peace of God that drops in your heart. That's how you just know it. You just know this is the will of God. This is the direction that God is leading me into. But you see, you can discover that direction if your mind is not renewed in the direction of his word because if your mind is not renewed it will show in your construction you know some people say how do you feel oh i think i'm good how is situation oh i don't think i'm gonna make it out this situation is very difficult for me how do you how, how do you feel about this or oh, i'm dying soon uh, what, what about this you know you see you see their conversation is coming from a wrong thinking the word of God should decide what you see, what you believe, and how you respond. It's not just how you feel. The word of God should decide how you feel. Let your feeling be based on the word of God, not just on negative emotions. Because what negative emotions will do is that they have potential to interrupt that word you receive from God. Then you begin to question the integrity of the word. How can God ask me to give a thousand dollar of my paycheck when I have so much debt to pay? How can God say that? How can God tell me to increase giving when I'm struggling financially? How can God tell me to let go of that offense, knowing how this guy has haunted me and betrayed me? How can God tell me that? How can God tell me to forgive, knowing how this man has abused me for over 15 years? Now listen to this. God's instruction for you will protect you from experiencing destruction. God's instruction for you will protect you from destruction, will, 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 will separate you from oppression. One of the ways we stay out of any form of oppression is when we reciprocate, when we take the word of God and say, man, I'm acting on this word. I'm making this word of God my final authority. This is how you break forth. This is how you succeed with your calling, with your assignment, with your vision. Is when you take that word. When Abraham heard the voice of God, he knew his destiny was settled. When he heard the voice of God, he never questioned the integrity of what he was hearing. He never quest questioned the ability of that word. He believed, he said, this is my future. Spoken to me. I'm going to take it. I'm going to run with it. This is my future in expression. This is my future in a spoken word. Thank you, Father. This is my future. My future is before me. Now, when he got that revelation, he knew that his destiny has been reprogrammed in a different direction. And what is he going to do? Faith is an action in the direction of the will of God. I want to say that again. I said, faith is an action in the direction of the will of God. 
Faith is an action in the direction of the will of God. It is an action in the direction of the will of God. Faith is an action in the direction of the will of God. So what happened here was in Genesis 12, verse 4, so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. Abraham departed. Wow, this was powerful. He never went to negotiate with his neighbors. Uh, he never went around to the city telling people, do you know God just spoke to me? I'm not sure it's the voice of God. Well, God spoke to me. Can you pray alongside with me for me to be sure if it is the voice of God? This man wasn't doing all of those crap we do in church today. He wasn't doing that. He packed his bags. He knew what he had. He has trained himself to know to know when God has spoken. It is a training you do for yourself. No one is going to do that for you. You train yourself to be sensitive to God's word. To be sensitive to God's voice. To be sensitive to God's thoughts. You train your mind. You train your mind to align with the counsel of heaven. Mazuka Pratosha. You train your mind to know when the Lord is saying, go left. Everybody's going right. And then the word of the Lord came to you say, go left. In the natural, there is this tendency to ask this question. Why should I go left? All my friends are going. Why should I go left? All my friends are going right. Why should I go left? All my friends are going right. Listen to this. Just that the crowd is in going in the same direction doesn't mean they are headed towards a better direction. And this is why it's important for you to understand the energy that is connected to the voice of God. You understand the energy that is connected to the voice of God. Here, Abraham knew, this is my future spoken to me. I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to run with it. Have God given you a word, but because you don't want to, you don't want to be in a position where people will criticize you, where people will talk about you. You, 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 you don't want people to say anything wrong about you. you. You felt like, man, I'm not going to connect with anybody. I don't want to have problem. I don't want to have issue. Listen to this. Doing the will of God may expose you to crisis. Why did I say it may expose you to crisis? The tendency for crisis to break out is there. Why? The enemy will fight you with everything at his disposal to ensure you don't pursue that will of God. You are reading your Bible, you're praying, but you are noticing this lust is just coming. You are reading your Bible, you're praying, but you're discovering that you're becoming more angry. You're struggling with anger. You know, you're reading your Bible, you're praying, you're noticing that it's becoming difficult for you to forgive. All of those things are satanic strategy to make you doubt that the word of God works. In, in times like that, what you need to do is to walk in the revelation of your righteousness and not in the knowledge of your efforts. Is to walk in the revelation of your righteousness, not in the knowledge of your effort. So I've been praying, I've been speaking the word, but why is the doors stay closed? I've been praying, I've been sowing my seed, but why is the situation not changing? I've been praying, I've been going to church, why is my life city somewhere? I've been helping people, but people have been betraying me. Why am I seeing all of those spirits? Listen to this carefully. Satan will always put up a fight. The reason for that fight is to make you doubt the word of God, is to make you disagree with scripture, is to make you feel like there is no need for you to continue doing the word of God. Why? Why not try something else? Why not step into something different? Why are you committed to these people? Why are you committed to those people? Why not just stop doing the word of God? He's bringing the pressure because he has a mission to frustrate your purpose. He's bringing the pressure for the reason for you to quit doing the word of God. And this is where a lot of people got offended and walk away. They had the word. They had the word of God. But they got offended and they walk away. 
They talk doing the will of God. You're not going to have challenges. You're not going to see situation. Why will I be doing the will of God and someone is gossiping me? Why will I do the will of God and people betray me? Where is God? And then offense comes in their hearts and they are abandon their purpose. How many millions of Christians walked away from destiny and purpose because of offense, because of their inability to discern that this is the hand of the enemy trying to obstruct the vision, trying to obstruct the purpose, the passion, the focus that God has given to them. The enemy is trying to come in and then they partnered with the enemy through offense. And they abandon the assignment. They abandon what God told them. They allow the knowledge of offense to frustrate the mission of their purpose. That's not good. In Mark Gospel chapter 4, in Mark Gospel chapter 4, I like to read from verse 14. It said, the sower soweth the word. Come on. The sower soweth the word. You have to wake up every day to sow the word of God into your life. It's very important. He said, the sower, sow the word. And these are they by the wayside, which, which by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comments immediately. This is why a lot of people feel frustrated. They say, why can't, why did God, God spoke to me? And then I saw hell break loose. I saw opposition. Oh, they're naive. <laughs> They don't know that the enemy will not wait that word to come to pass. The enemy is going to fight you to ensure that that prophetic word you receive is aborted. He wants to abort the way people can abort babies, you know, do abortion. The enemy wants the abortion of the rhema word you receive. The enemy wants you to lose that word. He wants you to lose that word you have received from God. And this is why your responsibility is to resist. The scripture talk about resist the devil, he will flee. The Bible talk about, he said, give no place to the devil. He said, resist, give no place to the devil. Then he said, cast out devils. When you watch all of these things, I've said, yeah, action word, cast out the devil, resist the devil, give no place to the devil. He's putting you in a position of authority where you decide your control over the enemy. He's putting you in a position of authority. So watch what happened here. He said, and these are they. We're reading Mark Gospel chapter 4, verse 15. He said, and, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comments immediately. He didn't wait for her to get home. He didn't wait for her to enter her car. He didn't wait for her to, to board the plane. Immediately, you just finished hearing the word of God. You are so happy. You are so excited. Bam. Immediately he comes to challenge the reputation and the integrity of that word you've heard. He came to challenge it. He said, come immediately. He come immediately and take it away the word that was sown in their heart. This is why a lot of people keep hearing, but nothing is changing. Because most of those words never made it to their spirit, the enemy came and took the word. He took the word away from them. He didn't take their car. He took their word. Because after taking the word from them, to take their car is easy. To take their health is easy. To take their marriage is easy. To take their children is easy. But if the word is there, you have something you can fight back with. That was why you see Jesus saying, it is written. It is written. It is written. But if the word of God is not in your spirit, how can you make that declaration? How can you make that confession that it is written? Jesus consistently maintained that confession because the word of God was in his spirit. He consistently maintained that, that, that confection three, three times, thrice. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Why was Jesus saying it is written? Because it is only what is written that gives us proof of victory. It is only what is written we can stand on to fight any opposition, to fight anything that is contrary to the knowledge of the will of God. It is only what is written. We are going to stand on the written word to disagree with anything that is not consistent with the revelation knowledge of the finished work of Jesus. We're going to stand on the written word. And Jesus said, it is written. But if the word of God is not in your spirit, you don't have the boldness to say it is written. 
If the word of God is not in your spirit, you don't have the boldness to say it is written. For, how do you say that? You can't even say that because the word is not there. So the enemy coming immediately to take away the word from their heart that was sown. Look at verse 16. He said, and these are they likewise which are sown among stony ground, who when they have heard the word, receive it with gladness. Oh, this is another kind of believers. They heard the word, oh, powerful word apostle, great word apostle. And they receive the word with gladness, verse 17, and and have no roots in themselves, and have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time. They couldn't endure for a long time, but for a time. This is where a lot of people are not having manifestation of the prophetic word given to them. They could not endure the process that is leading to the manifestation of that word. They could not endure the process. There are so many opposition, uh, so many distractions, and they're just saying, oh my God, if God is with me, why am I going through all of this? He said, afterward, when affliction or persecution rises for the word's sake, look at what happened here. Persecution and affliction rising for the word's sake. It is because of the word of God that this persecution is coming to you, sister. It is because of the word of God that this affliction is coming. For the word's sake, persecution. Look at this scripture here, very powerful. It said, what, it said after the word, it said afterward, when affliction or persecution rises for the word's sake, when affliction, I like to read this from the Passion Translation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Liba Shokariga. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, from the Passion Translation, watch this. Mm. Watch this. Wow. He said, because there is, oh, okay, he said, the seed sown on a gra on gravel represents, on gravel represent those who hear the word and receive it joyfully, but because their hearts fail to sink a deep Roots a deep root into the word, they don't endure for long. For when trouble, for when trouble, for when trouble, which normally comes to everyone, for when trouble or persecution comes on the account of the word, for when trouble and persecution came, this is why a lot of people could not run with the word of God. Because when trouble came, when persecution came, they changed their direction. It created an internal confusion that led to the abortion of that revelation, that made them to lose the gravity of the word. And that was how they abandoned God's word and walked into a different direction that was not consistent with the will of God. Because they couldn't retain that word. They could not return that God gave you a word and said, I'm going to do something great in your life. And five years has passed, 10 years has passed, and now you're, you're under pressure to perform. You're saying, when is it going to happen? If God gave me a word, why is it taking time? Well, what God spoke to me to have a listen to this, there is a process to every prophetic word that you have received. There is a process to every prophetic word you have received. Your ability to stay with that word and be consistent in the application of that word will guarantee the manifestation of that word. So if I'm not consistent, you like the scripture established in Hebrews of the 6 verse 12, when we're instructed, we should follow those who through faith and patience. We should follow those who through faith and patience. We should follow those who through faith and patient, we should follow those who through faith and patience. It was through faith and patience they inherited the promise. And faith and patience is one of the key things I believe people in the body of Christ need to begin to teach. You know, more of the teaching on faith and patience because it, it takes us into the manifestation of the will of God. Concerning whatever the Spirit of God has revealed to us, the patience. The faith, this, this, this is so powerful. Faith and patience is so strategic if you're going to come into the manifestation of the inheritance 
the things God has spoken to you, the things God has revealed to you, there is a place of faith and patience. And if you don't cultivate your faith and patience, the tendency for you not to come into the manifestation of that spoken word is there. Why? Because it will take faith and patience for you to possess the inheritance. And so important. That's very important. So here was shown that the word was shown in their hearts immediately. It was taken away. And these guys here, they received the word with gladness. And he said, and they have no roots in themselves. So to endure, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution rises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. This, this is the bottom line of the whole story. Sometime in ministry, in business, in life, in marriage, in relationship, offended. Offense is leading to riot, all kinds of killing, things happening. Offense, you see, offense have destroyed more lives, more destinies, more ministries, more marriages than fornication and adultery has done. Offense, take it from me. When people are offended, they can go any mile to cause destruction except they know how to deal with the root of offense because the root uh, of the offense leads to bitterness. Offense leads, before people become bitter, they were offended. Offense leads to bitterness. Most of the assassination, the killing, the, the riots, most of those things are rooted in an offended heart. And when people's hearts are, when people are offended, the tendency for them to abandon the will of God, the purpose of God, to step into the flesh, offense is stepping out of the spirit into the flesh. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, that what it is? Offense is stepping out of the spirit realm, the, 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 the spirit led life into a life of the flesh, offense, because in the atmosphere of offense, you don't think well. Then you start making decisions that may not be consistent with God's word. They may not be consistent with God's intention because we, you are offended. We are offended. So our emotions are just rising. And if we don't manage it with wisdom and understanding, we're going to create more damage than what we could ever imagine. And this is what the of God is saying to us right now, that the word came, but because of affliction, and persecution uh, for the sake of the word, immediately they are offended. They were happy before. They were happy they heard the voice of God. They were happy they were in church. They were in that conference. But now offense came in. This is why Jesus said the new commandment I give to you that you love one another. You love one, you know, walking in love is, is the proof of spiritual maturity. Uh, one of the signs that you're growing up in the things of the spirit is directly related to your love work. One of the signs that you're making progress in the things of the spirit is directly related to your love work. To the degree you're willing to walk in love is also a reflection of your level of maturity towards the things of the spirit. And this is where we have so much issue because we're offended to a point that it is not becoming difficult for we to love. It's becoming difficult for us to trust again because you have been betrayed several times. This woman keep betraying you, this man keep, so many things have been happening and now you're trying to pull back and now you, it's not becoming difficult for you to love again, for you to stand on the word of God again. Why? Because of offense. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Walking in love will keep you away from offense. Walking in love, offense will come. Offense will come. Things that will make you get offended will come. But it's your responsibility not to allow offense to destroy the destiny you're building with God. That's why we pray in tongues. In the midst of that whole crisis, it's the Spirit of God, just take over my mind. Just take over my mind. I, I don't want to do this. Lord, help me. We all need help. Say, so, Lord, help me. Help me not to lose it. Help me not to say things that I will regret a few hours from now, a few minutes from now. Spirit of God, just help me. Holy Spirit, help me. You're praying in tongue because you need to bring your emotions under control. You, you need to bring your emotion. Your, your emotion is raging. It's just, he wants to say, so Holy Spirit, just help me. Help me, Spirit of God, just help me. I receive insight. Help me. And then you're praying in tongues. And you see how the Holy Ghost will help you to navigate through that situation. 
to navigate through that issue because you had the voice of God. Now he said offense came because of the of the persecution and an affliction that came. This is what leads to offense most of the time: affliction and persecution, affliction, hardship, hard time, difficult time, affliction. People trying to take advantage of you. It can lead to offense, you know. The verse 18 said, and these are they which are sown among tongues, such that hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches. God spoke to them. They heard the voice of God, but the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the loss of other things, entering in, choke the word, it becometh unfruitful. <laughs> Wow, glory be to God. Please don't try to impress anyone. There is no joy to impress anyone. Well, that's not part of our assignments. The most important thing is to do what the will of God instructed you to do and make that the parameter of your lifestyle. And your way of thinking should be consistent with what God has asked you to do. So you don't have this trying to compare yourself with this minister. And sometimes I see a lot of pastors do that, you know, trying to compare their ministry with this ministry. I've done this, you have not done this, I've done that, you have not done that. And all of those things come from low self-esteem. When people have a low self-issue, they try to prove to you what they have done. But you need to understand the kingdom. The kingdom is more than in doing, it's in being. It's in you being who God wants you to be. It's more than doing. It's in you being who God wants you to be. And here we saw that the word of the Lord came to them and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the loss of other things entering in choke the word. They received a word from God, but that word was choked. So sometimes people hear from God and the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches and the loss of other things entering in choke the word. It choke that word and it become unfruitful. This is why most Rema word never made it to manifestation. That those who had those words never benefited from the revelation of that word. The universal manifestation. Why become why, why? Because that word was not fruitful. Because of the loss, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of, uh, the deceitful, the, the deceitful of riches, choking, entering, loss of other things, choke that word. So it's important that when you hear the word of God, then you take it. You take it. You take it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Now, I like us to just pray in the Spirit. Just one minute, just pray in the Spirit before a round of this broadcast. Today is the one of these rare experience to be back here. Tomorrow at the same time, just go ahead and thank the Lord. Mashande de Bosha Kanaba. Rimbo Shoko Tomo Boshan Kanaba. Lord, we thank you that your word will prosper in our hearts. Your word will prosper in us. That will become effective and productive to become doers of your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for teaching us the word. Thank you for showing us step by step how to make the world work for us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we're afraid. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, if you're watching this broadcast and you don't know Jesus as a Lord and Savior, one reason why we do all of the things we do around here is just to bring people to the knowledge of the will of God and also the opportunity of people to receive Jesus as the Lord of their life. So if you're watching this on any platform around the world, and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. We pray this proud of us. It means one again, and the Spirit of God will lead you from this day forward. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Fitman Teachings on YouTube. It's Fitman Teachings on YouTube and also you can watch some of our broadcasts by going to finishworktv.com by going to finishworktv.com and also you can connect with us on Periscope it's fitman 2012 on Periscope and also want to encourage you to you can place all of our books by going to amazon.com by going to amazon.com you can do that 40 things you need to know about your future 
and there's greatness in you. All of these books are available on Amazon.com. Was encouraged to consider partnership with this ministry. Partnership is strategic. Who are partners? Those who consistently pray for this ministry and those who allow the Spirit of God to lead them to give in any way to support the broadcast and reach more people around the world. If you want to partner with this ministry, you want to an offering or a show towards the ongoing broadcast and the things we do around the world, you can go to finishworktv.com, finishworktv.com and slash giving, and you can give from that platform. We love you until our next broadcast tomorrow. Don't forget this. There is greatness in you, and Jesus is coming soon.